Behind me, we have two large three row SUVs. One of them is very off-road focused, the Land Rover Defender. One is much more on-road focused, the Toyota Highlander XSE. In this video, we're gonna torture test their all-wheel drive systems. We're gonna put these two vehicles through the TFL slip test. Basically, we get various wheels stuck on purpose in these rollers, and then we see if the four-wheel drive system and the traction control and the ABS sensors can figure out a way to get us unstuck. The goal of the TFL slip test is to see how these vehicles perform in harsh environments. Stuff like snow, ice, mud, rocks, um, aggressive mall parking lots, <laughs> you know, basically places where you're gonna lose traction. There's a new Ford Bronco coming and it does look very cool, but what if you want something one of a kind? Well, our friends over at Omaze have an opportunity for you to win this custom classic Bronco in $20,000 cash. Now the guys over at Gateway built this Bronco and it is super unusual. It started life as a first generation classic Bronco. They then cut it in half extended the wheelbase, added a second set of doors, so now it has three rows of seats, and even better, underneath the hood is a five liter Coyote Ford V8 that develops 460 horsepower, made it to a 10-speed automatic. It's rolling on 35-inch tires. This is an insane build. Every donation supports the Kevin Love Fund, and this organization is working toward bettering people's mental health and mental awareness. Enter for your chance to win this unique Bronco in $20,000 at omaze.com slash fastlane. I really would love to drive this beast because it looks crazy. Donations support the Kevin Love Fund. The first test is the front wheel slip test. Both front wheels totally stuck in the rollers. The rear wheels are gonna have to push us off. Now, <laughs> let's talk about this new Highlander for a second. It's available in three, that's right, three different all wheel drive configurations. Now, of course, there is still a front wheel drive Highlander, but the standard all wheel drive system is what you'd find in most Highlanders, but this one has a premium all wheel drive system. It's called the Dynamic Torque Vectoring All Wheel Drive. This is the new XSE trim. And then there's also a totally different system in the hybrid, but that's a story for another day. So I'm going to reverse onto the rollers here. Yep. And then I put the vehicle in a neutral, kind of let it settle. And then we're gonna go into drive. Now, let me show you this. The Highlander has a bunch of different drive modes, ranging from sport to eco, mud and sand, rock and dirt. There's a snow setting and there's also a normal setting. First of all, I think that most people are gonna drive this vehicle every day in the normal setting, not ever touch any of those other buttons. So we're gonna do the test in normal. However, if we get really, really stuck, maybe we'll try dialing in like rock and dirt or mud and sand or something. So, uh, front wheel slip test into drive. Foot off the brake here, gently onto the throttle. Oh, good result. So not much slipping. The rear wheels kicked in and we uh, were able to glide off. The Highlander is totally different than the Land Rover in its all wheel drive philosophy. Every day driving around, it'll typically be front wheel drive um, and then it can send up to 50% of torque to the rear end according to Toyota uh, when it's needed. So we'll try it one more time, a little bit more throttle here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's easy. There's a there's no delay. It's a, it's a good result right off the bat for the Highlander. Every new Defender sold here in the US has standard four wheel drive. What's the difference between all wheel drive and four wheel drive? Well, you can fight about that in the comments below, but in my opinion, four wheel drive means it has a low range transfer case. This is a proper low range, so this is what I consider four wheel drive. The Land Rover has a huge number of drive modes, which I can engage here, and you can see I can set the vehicle up for various different terrains, from grass, gravel, snow, to even a wade setting, but I'm gonna go into the auto, because this has the advanced off-road capability group, which gives me that auto setting, and it should set the vehicle up or the four wheel drive up for various terrains on the fly, and it should be able to figure it out as we go, so that's what I'm hoping for. So front wheel slip test any Land Rover into drive, foot off the brake, gently on to the throttle there, and no worries. Here, we'll try it one more time, but you can see there, absolutely no difficulty when the front wheels get stuck. So into the rollers, into neutral, 
let the vehicle settle into drive gently on the throttle yeah I didn't feel any spinning but let's see what the slow-mo looks like Next up, the diagonal slip test. So the right rear and the left front wheels are stuck in the rollers. The other two opposite ends of the car are gonna to have to pull us off. A very common situation when you're out in the snow and the ice. Extremely common off-road, maybe in the sand or the mud. Let's see how the Highlander will perform in this test. Toyota says that the Highlander can use that all-wheel drive system to distribute torque to the left or the right. <laughs> We're definitely gonna put that through its paces today. Diagonal slip test still in normal mode here in the Highlander. So into neutral. Now into drive. Gently off the brake. Gently onto the throttle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Very good result. Let's give that one more try, but that was awesome. That is why you get the torque vectoring system. I'd love to try like kind of the normal all-wheel drive see how that would compare i'll try giving it a little bit more initial throttle here oh, 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 oh good job toyota that is killer at least in the diagonal slip test all right time to step it up a notch diagonal slip test in the land rover defender now this should be interesting the Defender is available with an active locking rear differential. Basically, it's an automatic locking rear diff that engages when the computer sees fit. This vehicle does not have that, so we're going to have to rely on the traction control to break the spinning wheel and send power to the wheel with traction. So, I'm onto the rollers, into neutral, letting the vehicle settle, into drive, foot off the brake, gently onto the throttle. Okay, so not much spinning before we were able to glide off. Let's give it one more try. In a neutral, let the vehicle settle into drive. Give it a little bit more throttle right off the bat this time, just like I did in the Toyota. <laughs> All right, that was a very impressive result. Land Rover does know how to build an excellent traction control system, and the terrain response is probably the best in the business, as it should be because Land Rover pioneered it some 20 or so years ago. Uh, so they, uh, they have a lot of uh, experience refining the system. Time for the three-wheeled slip test. We're really stepping it up a couple notches here. Now in this test, both rear wheels totally stuck. The left front wheel totally stuck. Only the right front has traction. All right, let's see what happens in the Toyota. So far, the Toyota's been killing it. Let's see what happens here. So in a neutral, vehicle is settled. Normal mode starting out with. Gently onto the throttle. It's thinking about it. Hmm. Come on, figure it out. All right, there we go. So you do have to keep your foot in it for a little bit, but it does figure it out. Now let's try something fun here. Let's go ahead and put the vehicle into rock and dirt. There you go, you get a little screen here for your torque vectoring. Let's see if that changes the result at all, sticking the Highlander in its off-road setting. Okay, in a neutral, let's see if rock and dirt makes a difference. Okay, gently onto the throttle. It's thinking about it. <laughs> it's like, that wheel's definitely stuck. Yeah, so are these other two, buddy. Hmm. Rock and dirt does not seem to have too much of a difference. Okay, well, I went into normal mode and just kind of put my foot into it and we got off, but uh, it took some work.
Okay, three-wheeled slip test in the Land Rover Defender. Now, let's get a little bit into the weeds for a sec, talk about the fundamental differences between the Toyota and the Land Rover because it's a very different philosophy. This Land Rover has a center differential, which means that at any point as you drive down the road, all four wheels could be getting traction, but it's an open differential typically, which means that when you go around turns, it won't kind of crab on you like a Wrangler wouldn't four high, but it has an automatic locker, so it can lock that center diff at any time and provide uh, equal wheel speed front and back, if you will. It's very high tech stuff, but it is a full time four wheel drive system. There's never a point where it's front wheel drive only and then the rear wheels get traction. So backing onto the first three wheel slip test here, the right front tire is on the ground. Still in the auto terrain response, but if it gets really stuck, I'll try dialing in like a rock mode or something. Foot off the brake, gently onto the throttle. Come on, figure it out. Figure it out. Traction control light is blinking. Okay, so we did it, but that did take some time. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try selecting a different drive mode. So let's go ahead and try grass, gravel, snow, mud and rut, sand, rock crawl. Center diff locked up into drive. Okay, cool. All right, so it passed the first three wheel slip test in both the auto setting and the rock setting. Let's try the next three wheel slip test. Just a quick behind the scenes here that I don't typically show. Um, in between each session, I actually have to re-lubricate the rollers. You can see, especially in the three-wheeled one with a lot of spinning, and with these heavy SUVs, they get really, really hot. And sometimes I even have to uh, replace the rollers because they start to uh, roll less easily over time, but you can see here, yep, they're still holding up well even after that difficult test with the uh, the uh, Highlander and the uh, Land Rover, but it's just constant greasing, and I wish I could actually pack grease into the little ball bearings, but they are sealed in here, so uh, uh, the, uh, the rollers part two that we end up buying, which are stupid expensive, we'll have to get something a, a little bit more uh, user friendly. This final test is gonna be the most difficult of them all at least for the Highlander three-wheeled slip test, the right rear is the only one with traction, so torque vectoring is really gonna have to come into its own if it's uh, gonna get this beast unstuck. This is gonna be a really tricky test here. Starting out in normal mode, three-wheeled slip test, right rear has traction, the other ones, no way, sir. Now, I don't think that this vehicle has a tremendous amount of articulation. So that also puts it at a disadvantage, but that's what would happen off-road too. All right, into drive. Onto the throttle. We're shifting, it's thinking about it. Oh, now we really shifted. Back into the middle there, car, don't try to cheat on me. All right, we are very stuck in normal mode, so Let's see if rock and dirt can help us out. All right, still stuck. Let's try mud and sand. Into mud and sand here. Don't, don't go slipping on me, car. All right, how about snow? <laughs> Just going through every setting. Let's see if we can get unstuck. Okay, I may need a push. So unfortunately, the three-wheeled slip test with one wheel on the ground and the Highlander's not having much luck. Let's see what that third wheel is doing back there, if it's like trying to slip or if it's just sitting still. Um, even though that is a 
typical all season. If this had a, uh, a locking in the locking rediff, I think it could uh, give us a shove. I need a push. What's the issue, Tommy? Well, I don't know if that right rear tire is spinning or what's going on, but it's just. You're stuck? Yeah, I'm stuck. Oh, hold on, let me see. So that one's that one. Let me see. Well, that did not take much of a shove. So it's clearly trying hard. It just doesn't quite have the oomph to send enough power to that wheel. But let's see what happens in the Land Rover. Second three-wheeled slip test in the Defender. So, I'm in auto mode again. See what happens. High range, uh, just like you would drive around every single day in the reverse. Okay, so it's rear wheel on the ground, the other three totally stuck. In this case, the right rear is on the ground. We're settled into drive. Gently accelerating. That was pretty cool. I noticed something cool on the screen here. So the computer will actually tell you which of the wheels is spinning. So in this case, that wheel is traction and it knows. It knows. See, when I start to accelerate, you can see the other three show me some slippage. Haha! <laughs> How cool is that? All right, I'm gonna try it one more time, this time in rock mode. Might as well while we're here. So we are in rock crawl setting now, in a neutral, into drive, foot off the brake. It's spinning, it's thinking about it. Oh God, it's so good. You know, I got a lot of comments that, oh, you gotta get the rear locking diff with the Defender. You really don't. I mean, unless you're doing serious hardcore rock crawling, it's just amazing what this new Land Rover Terrain Response will do. It's just, in my opinion, the best in the business at allocating power. They've been doing it, like I said, since I think 2002 in the full-size Range Rover. Let me know in the comments section below if that's correct, but it's a, it's a beast. So an interesting result in our controlled environment. Let me know in the comments section below which one of these two vehicles you think did better. Obviously the Land Rover and this Toyota don't compete. They're two different price ranges and they're meant for two different buyers. But it is cool to see the difference between a proper transfer case and low range versus a much more road going all wheel drive system that can send torque to the rear axle. Well guys, thank you once again for watching. As always, this has been Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews.